Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video for WordPress, I'm going to show you how we can create interactive elements in Slider Revolution 5. Now we can use these for things like infographics where we want to highlight a particular piece of information or we want to have a rollover effect. So you can see on this example, if I come over these information icons, you can see we get a little pop-up that tells us something more about this particular aspect in the image. So I'm going to go through, show you how to create all these from scratch inside Slider Revolution 5. So let's check that out right now. Okay, so I've created my slider and we're ready to go through now and set all the settings that I want in there. So we're going to set this to be a default slider. I've given it a name. In this instance, I've called it information and I give it an alias. I'm going to use the standard slider. If you only wanted to use one slide in this example, then you could, if you wanted to, leave it as a hero scene and it'll automatically take out the things like the navigation arrows and so on. Whichever you think is going to work the best for you, I'm going to leave it as a standard slider. I'm going to come down, check full width. If I want to control the height and the size of the slider, I can do that from this point. So everything is set up there the way I want to. Now we're going to come to the right hand side and take a look at the settings we have there. So we're going to go to general settings to start off with. And what I want this to do is I want this to stop and hold on the first slider. So I may set this up to be, for example, a slider set that we have different information points and we want the user to manually go through that so they can interact at their own time without it automatically advancing to the next slide and the next slide and so on and looping. So to do that, all we need to do is come over to the general settings. And from the general settings, we come down to stop slide after, enable that. And you can see that opens up a couple of options. So we've got the amount of loops, we're going to leave that as zero. And stop and slide, we're going to set that to be one. So what this will do is it'll take the slide, it won't go through and transition to the next and the third and so on. It will stop on the first slide and wait on that until we click to advance to the next slide. So that's all we need to do there. I'm going to come up to the progress bar and make sure that that is inactive. I don't want the progress bar on there. We're going to come down then to navigation. And I can choose any kind of navigation type I want, but for this example, I'm going to use enable arrows. So I'll switch that on so the user can now interact with the slider when they're ready to move on to the next one or jump back to the previous one. They have that option available. If I wanted to, I could go through and configure all the different settings on how this looks, the position, the styling, so on. I'm going to leave them as their defaults, and I'm going to hit save now so we've got everything set up the way I want. So once we've hit save, we'll now go over and we can start creating our slides for our slider. So the first thing we're going to do, you can see we've got slide one created. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a name and I call this cafe, just so it gives it some relevance. And we'll hit enter on there to save that out. So now I can go and give it a background. So I'm going to choose background image. I'm going to go to object library for this example and load one in from slider revolution. If you don't have this, obviously you're going to want to upload your own images. Then you just use the media library option, upload your image for your slider, and then we can start interacting with that. So I'm going to choose your ob object library for this example. I'm going to let that load up, and I'm going to choose the object that I want, which is this one, which shows a co sort of coffee shop. And I just choose my size. If we scroll down, you see that now has been set up, and we've got that in our slider area ready to start working on it. So we've got the basics all set up. As always, hit save at this point to make sure that all the things I've done are all in place. We can go and take a look at the next slide and do that later, but for now, we'll leave that as it is. So I'm going to come down now and we're going to start using the different layers that we have available. And we're going to use some of the new features in version 5.3 of Slider Revolution. Now, if you're not using the latest version, you don't have access to it for some reason, don't worry. Most of these options will still work in there. The only thing that's not going to be available to you is the grouping option. But as always, I'd recommend go and download the latest up-to-date version 5.3 of Slider Revolution so you have these extra facilities available to you. So let's start off now by creating our layers and then we can start adding the interactivity to that quite easily. So let's check that out. Okay, so let's go and add the information icon so we can let the user know there's something to interact with on this particular screen. So to do that, all we do is come up to the add layer option, come down and we're going to choose object. And from there, you can see I filtered the information out under the icons for the info. If you didn't have that, you can just simply take that out. And this is the kind of view that you'd see. We say all, that'll show us everything. We can now go in and filter that out if we want to and specify exactly what element we want. So we're going to just choose the icon. We'll choose this one. That'll put a bit of code in there now that says there's an icon. So we're going to click to confirm that. We can now go through when that's selected. We can reposition it if we want to and put that where we want in our image. So we'll put that down onto the sort of tea coffee machine. 
Now let's just change the size and make it a little bit more noticeable. So let's just change that to something like 50 pixels. And you can see that now becomes a lot larger. We'll just change that now to be a different color. So we'll make it something like yellow so it stands out. We'll just choose that. That's fine. So that stands off the background. Okay. So there's our first element. So we've now created that. So the next thing we want to do is put our little information box in there. So again, we come up to add layer. We come down to text stroke HTML. And what we're going to do is we're going to give this a name. So we're going to say coffee machine. So there's our information. We'll check to confirm that. And we'll do the same. We'll just reposition that where we want it. So we'll put that down for there. Now we can go and style that. So we can style both the text and the container of the text itself. So let's just change the font. So we've got that. We'll set it to railway. We'll set the font size to be something like 40, for example. And we'll set the line height to be 30. Actually, let's put that down to 30 as well. It looks a bit big in 40. So we'll set that to 30. So there's our text. We want to change the color or we want to change the, the font weight or anything. We can do all of that. So what I'm going to do is expand this advanced style options out and we're going to come through to the background. We're going to set a background color and we'll just choose another yellow color to match the same as the icon. So we'll just go and choose a color that's kind of pretty close to that. If we wanted to, we can set the background of this to be slightly transparent. So let's set that to 0.8 so we allow a little bit of the background to show through so we don't obscure anything. So that's pretty cool. And if we come up to spaces, we can now add a little bit of padding to this. So let's just put a 20 pixel padding around the edge of the text. So it means that everything looks a little bit nice and neat. So I'll add a 20 as well. So we've now got an information box that looks a little bit easier to see on screen. So if we take a look, you can see now that's looking pretty good. Okay, so we've got the basic elements in there. Next thing I'm going to do is specify how this interacts with this. So we want the information icon when the mouse goes over it to show us the machine, the coffee machine information. And when the mouse goes out of it, we want that to be hidden. So that's pretty easy to do. So the first thing I want to do with this is make sure that this doesn't display right at the beginning with the slider. So if we come down to our timeline, you can see we've got the coffee machine, which is the text, and we've got the class, the I class, which is the icon. So what I want to do is I'm going to just drag this in on the timeline slightly. So it means that it doesn't start at the beginning of the slide and doesn't end at the end of the slide. So that gives us some breathing space to allow this to show up when we need it to. So that's all we need to do with that. So the next thing we want to do is tell Slider Revolution how we want that interaction to work. So I'm going to select the icon. We're going to come back up to the top and we're going to go to Actions. And now we can go through and we can build up actions telling it how we want this particular element to be utilized in our design. So if we click on the plus, you can see we have three different options. We can have an action happen when we click, when the mouse enters the space of that particular element, or when the mouse leaves that element. So for this example, we want to say mouse enter. We're going to tell it now that we want it to start layer in animation. And then we can say, what do we want to target? In other words, what element, what layer do we want the in and out animations to take effect on? So what we want to do is we're going to come to this and you can see coffee machine is our option. So we can check that. So this says when the mouse enters the space that is used by the information icon, start the layer in animation for the coffee machine layer. Okay, might sound a bit complicated, but once you see it in action, you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're going to do the same again now underneath because obviously we want it when the mouse goes out of the space that the icon is using, we want the reverse to happen. So we'll click plus to add a new one. This time we choose mouse leave. We say start layer out animation, in other words, the fade out at the end of it. And what layer would we want to affect? The coffee machine layer. So there's the when the mouse enters action and there's the when the mouse leaves action. So let's just click on save to save that slider. Now I'm going to take you over to a demonstration page and I'll show you that in action. Okay, so here's the demonstration of that particular slider we just set up. So you can see there's our information icon by the tea and coffee machine. So once I take my mouse over the I icon, you can see that the action happens. In other words, the fade in of that particular layer happens. Once I take my mouse out of that, it triggers the end animation, which in this instance is fading out. So we take it away, disappears, take it back on, shows us that information. So that's quite easy. 
So let's just go back now to the admin section and I want to show you just a couple of other things you can do with this. So this is great, but the relationship between the two of those elements, we'd have to move, if we want to sort of reposition things, we'd have to go through time and time again and move all the different elements. Now, if there's any two elements, that's not really that difficult, but imagine you had five or six different elements and you had five or six different interactive portions of your image. There's suddenly a lot of information you have to move around and realign and it can get a little bit time consuming. So what we can do now with the latest update of Slider Revolution 5 is we can now group those things together. And that's pretty easy. All we do is come down to where we've got our timeline, click Add Group, that will now create a group which we're going to rename just so it makes sense. We're just going to call this coffee group. So we now know that that's a group. And as you can see, it capitalizes everything. So we know that if there's a group option, it'll always be capitalized, which means we can visually see that a lot quicker and easier. So there's our group. And if we take a look, you can see there's our group layer. Now, what this does is this is like a container for anything we drop inside it. So if I just bring that down to roughly position where we want it to be. Okay, so now to put the pieces of information, the different elements into that group, it's quite straightforward. What we do is grab the element we want, in this instance, the eye for information, we'll drag that over the box. You have to make sure you take your mouse pointer over this and you'll see that the box now highlights green. So that's saying that whatever we let go in there is gonna be part of that particular grouping. So once I let go, that becomes part of the group. So you can see the background goes black, and we now have the group active so I can start editing the position of different elements inside that group. So if I want to come out of that, all I need to do is click anywhere outside the group. That switches our image back to normal mode and we're now no longer working in the group. So I can do the same again for the coffee machine section. So I can grab that, bring it down. You can see it goes green. Once I let go, that becomes part of it. So now I can align everything the way I want it to inside that group. And if I want to change the size of the group box, I can do that quite easily as well. So let's get this roughly where I want it to be, making sure everything is lined up. Okay, there we go. Once I click outside that now, you can see that if I drag this box around, everything is dragged around inside it. So if I want to resize this, I can literally just grab the little resize handles on the edges, and you can see I can resize this to get as I want. If I want to edit it, I can just simply click, and now I can start editing again. So I can reposition, make sure everything is, is aligned the way I want it to be. So there we go. So now I can quickly and easily move these around exactly as I want. Now one of the other benefits of working with groupings is the fact you can actually duplicate the entire group. So let's just say, for example, I want to create another one exactly the same as this to move it somewhere else, but I want to make the changes afterwards. I can select the group. If I come up to the top, you can see we've got coffee group. If I expand that out, you can see we now have the option to clone. So if I do that, I'll automatically create a duplicate. So you can click on that and you can see there's our second copy of it. So we can now just literally drag that and reposition it. Make sure we've got the box, the group. There we go. So I can now reposition that wherever I want. And once I've done that, I can now make the changes to this. So if I select the group itself, I can come down, I can rename that. So you can see it's automatically highlighted it. So we're going to call this light group. Change the information inside this one as well. So we're going to come in where it says coffee machine. So let's edit that group. Double click where it says coffee machine. And we're going to just put in the light bulbs. There we go. So now edit that, reposition that to make sure that everything sits the way you expect it to. And then once we've done that, we can now position the actual element itself. Hit save just to make sure we've got that saved. But there's one thing we need to do. If we leave it as it is, the actions that have been applied to the information button will still trigger the coffee machine layer because that's what it's looking for. And if we come down, we've got to make sure that these are all labeled correctly. So we need to change that now from being coffee machine to light bulbs or light bulbs. So now we can reference that. So all we need to do is come back up to this, edit the group, click on the eye icon. You can see there's all our actions. And all I need to do now is change it from coffee machine to light bulbs and the same then for the next one to light bulbs. So now we're doing exactly the same as before. Mouse enter, start the, ad, uh, the animation for the in on light bulbs. And when the mouse leaves, start the out animation for the light bulbs layer. 
So again, once we finish, click outside, we'll hit save on that. Then we'll take it over to the demonstration site and I'll show you now how this all works on the site itself. So as you can see, we've got the information icons, one up by the light bulb, one on the tea coffee machine. If I take my mouse over that, we get told that's a coffee machine. Mouse over this one, we get told it's light bulbs. So that's it. That's how you add that interactivity to your sliders in Slider Revolution 5. Now, there's lots of reasons you could use this. You don't have to use this as a slider at all, like that we've got set up. You could use this as an information graphic. You could use this as a slideshow where you want people to interact with certain elements to find out more about a particular image or a diagram or description or something. So there's lots of reasons why you can use this, and Slider Revolution 5 makes it very, very easy to create these interactive elements. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else covered on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.